All right. Well, let's get this started. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you very much for logging on today. Um, I really do appreciate it. Anajet appreciates it. Um, we're going to go through uh, quite a bit of information, um, but uh, this, this series is titled Achieving More with the Empower uh, and the Sprint. Uh, my name is Adam Tapre. I'm the Key Accounts Manager here at Anajet. Uh, I've been with a little bit of history about myself. I've been with the company for almost five years now. Um, uh, started when we were really just kind of getting off the ground and, and seeing some some tremendous growth, which is what we'll we're going to cover a little bit of that a little later too. Uh, but it's just kind of an exciting um, uh, industry to be a part of, kind of an exciting uh, exciting growth uh, that we've seen. Um, we'll go through all that. There's a lot of different uh, avenues that we're going to cover. I do see that some people have already started asking questions. That's awesome. I want all the questions in the world. Please throw them at me, even if you, you know, need to hear them twice. Send them over. There's actually going to be a question and answer section at the very end of this webinar, and we can take as long as as much time as is needed to go through it. I don't care if it's all day, but if you guys have questions, please don't don't hesitate to shoot them. Uh, I want to make sure that we are covering everything. Um, Here's basically what we're going to uh, we're going to cover, uh, and just to make sure everybody can see that my screen where your screen should say the agenda. Um, if that's not saying it, please let me know. But uh, it should say the agenda, and really we'll talk about the DTG industry and the market. We'll do a quick recap. We'll cover some challenges and some business advantages. We'll talk about some of the markets and the specifically how they relate to you. Uh, then we're, we'll go into the Empower. Uh, and the Empower latest uh, um, advancement with the I-Series. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the Sprint. Uh, go through the, the you know, what I think is some of the most important parts, the economics of it. Then into the customer, some customer success stories. And then, like I said, at the very end for the Q&A session. Uh, you can ask the questions in the chat log, but I won't get back to you until the, the Q&A session. But please, like I said, if a question pops up, feel free to, to, to shoot it over to me. I want to make sure that we cover everything for you guys. So why direct to garment printing? Well, just like in any other industry, digital is the future. Think about uh, Kodak and how they used to work with film. Uh, now everything is digital when it comes to cameras, and everything is transitioning that way. It's got everything has to be compatible with, with a computer, and it's just a logical next step. Plus, it gives you the ability to be more um, diversified. You now have the ability to do one color a thousand colors, one shirt a thousand shirts, with no. Uh, no change in price. And because of that type of flexibility that you now have, you can create a competitive edge versus the, the old traditional way maybe through screen printing or transfers. Because not only can you now do it for less, but you can do it more efficiently. I'm sure you're on this for those exact reasons. And you probably see that there's some continuous, there's, there's a lot of pricing pressure on all the different products and services that you're offering. So the only way that you can separate yourself and add value to your product, because that's the word of the day today, is value. It's not so much I'm going to compete with this screen printer down the road. I'm going to create value with my product with a direct-to-garment printer. That way you can make those higher, higher margins. There's also a lot of increased competition through web and social media, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But think of the web as a giant mall, and you want to have your store in that mall. You want to be able to reach out, whether that's through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, your own personal online website. These are all things that we set up for you guys. And that's where the money is. Everything is going digital. doesn't matter which industry you're at. It's just a logical next, next step, like I said. So you personally, let's talk about the garment printing industry as a whole in the United States. Okay, Garment decoration. That encompasses screen printing, direct garment printing, embroidery, everything that you can imagine that uh, is garment decoration uh, is a $44 billion industry. Now, garment printing, now that's specifically screen printing and, uh, uh, and direct garment printing, is, is more than half of that. 
And today, garment printing industry is still 95% screen, but slowly being eroded by digital printing. And you're, you start to see it. Uh, just uh, look at all the, the biggest online retailers out there. Um, uh, every major one that sells shirts uh, that you buy one at a time, two at a time, um, they're all using direct garment printers now. I actually was walking through the mall the other day, and uh, just because of uh, my familiarity with uh, direct garment printing and screen printing, I could walk by a, a, a shirt, and I felt it, and it was obviously direct garment printed. Um, and this was in a major, major chain store. So it's, it's, it's definitely trending towards this. But the, but the beauty of it is, and the real beauty of all of it is, is that we're still at the beginning stages. So there's a tremendous amount of room to grow, which is where this, which is where this slide is trying to say is that 95% of it is still screen printing. It's still the old, archaic way of doing stuff. And now garment printing is starting to take a bigger and bigger and bigger chunk out of it. And I would bet within the next 10 to 15 years, you're going to start seeing 50% of all, of all uh, garments being printed will be printed using garment printing. So here's the challenges. Okay? This is... This is this list right here. I'll bet if, if you have reached out to us and you've been on this, so you're, you're obviously on this webinar for a reason. You have some interest in direct environment printing, right? I'll bet that the reason why you have an interest is because of one of these things. Because this is what I hear from my customers. That their production and equipment can be very costly. And I'm not just talking about the equipment itself, but housing the equipment, storing it, everything that goes along especially if they're trying to get into the screen printing world and they got to have a huge warehouse, be able to dispose of the ink correctly, have the emulsions, the screens, everything set up takes a lot of space, not just the equipment, but the space needed to operate it. Plus, that segment of the industry is very competitive, so why even get involved in it? That older technology, that screen printing, requires a steep learning curve. It's an art form. There's no two ways about it. That's another beauty with digital printing is that it doesn't matter what you really put into the printer. As long as it's high enough resolution, it can duplicate it. Now, there is some, something to be said about being able to fine-tune certain things, and that just comes with a little bit of experience. But screen printing in itself is a completely different animal. There's so much more that goes into creating a viable screen printed shirt versus creating a direct garment printed shirt. And that's the idea as technology improves, we open up the gamut of what can be done and let the machine do the work instead of the person do the work. People call in all the time asking because smaller jobs result in low to zero margins, whether they're outsourcing it or whether they're doing it on their screen printing setup or however they're doing it. They're either not doing it and turning away the business or doing it for pennies above cost just to keep some people coming in, which is a waste of time. There's a continuous need to attract new clients. How do you attract new clients if you're just doing what everybody else is doing? You have to create something that differentiates yourself from your competitors. Well, I can name a couple things that will differentiate yourself from a competitor. How about having the ability to do a million different colors? How about having the ability to do a photograph on a shirt? How about having the ability to do one shirt at a time? How about having the ability to customize and personalize each individual shirt for every person that comes out there, say for a, a volleyball team? This separates yourself from your, your competitors and adds value to your product, which allows you as well to not only be able to do it, but to charge more for it. I don't want to get too off topic here, but I want to use this as an example because I had a customer that went over with this with me just last month. He was competing with a school to get a, uh, a contract for all of their sports. Okay? Uh, there was a, a local screen printer that he'd been working with for the last, that the school had been working with for the last five years, and that local screen printer had put out every shirt that they wanted and everything was fine, and they were, they were low cost and everything was good. But this, this guy walked into the school and said, I'll do everything that that screen printer's doing, and I'll match his cost. But I'll have a quicker turnaround time, 
and you, you can even order on demand. Instead of ordering in bulk from me, you can just order them as you need them. Well, that that's a tremendous amount of value, and he matched his cost with them, right? Because now the, now the school, who has limited funds, isn't sitting there going, well, shoot, i got to order at least 200 shirts to make this worth it, but I don't know if I can move all 200 shirts uh, through the, you know, the student body and faculty. But now he can order that the school can order on demand as needed. So he picks up the account that way. But he didn't just stop there. Then he went to each individual head coach and uh, the athletic director for the school, and he said, hey, I'll do these same shirts that you've been getting for the last five years. No problem. But for an extra two bucks per shirt, I'll put the name and number on the left pocket of each customer or of each uh, student uh, athlete. For an extra two bucks a shirt, which was a total of about ten cents worth of ink for him, about half of them took up took him up on it, and that spread to their parents, and now their parents are ordering shirts for all the you know grandkids, and they're not even going through the school; they're going directly to him. This was a great way for him to one get his foot in the door, but show value and show and differentiate it, and in turn increase his margins. Because yeah, he was making enough money off the off just doing what the other customer was doing, but more importantly, by offering more than what he, than what the local uh, 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 competitor was doing, he was adding value to his product, which allowed him to charge more, which allowed him to have bigger margins. And these are the types of things that you want to think about with direct to garment printing, because it's not just competing with the local screen printer anymore. It's now taking that business because you have more capabilities. So moving on, need competitive edge, high customer service quotient to lock in repeat buyers and clients. What's going to lock in a repeat buyer and client more than I'll be able to do anything you need me to do? No ifs, ands, or buts. It doesn't matter if it's a million colors or you want to personalize each individual shirt. Guess who's always going to come back to you, especially when you can do it in a quick turnaround time. Lead times, ship times, prevent fast fulfillment. Why even bother? Without question, I, if you, we did a poll of the average screen printer across the United States in a two-week turnaround time. Two weeks. You give me 100 shirts and an Empower 10, and I'll have it done in an hour and a half. So the solutions, right? A durable, high-volume, direct-to-garment printer. It's easy to learn for multiple product lines. Remember, it's not an art form like it is with screen printing. You take a high-resolution image, you load it into the software, you hit print. Predictable profit margins. It's no longer how many you're doing and everything like that. You know exactly what each shirt is going to cost, down to the penny for the ink and your, your cost for your garment. Attract all different types of businesses with samples, put their logos and campaign images onto their shirt. You know, this was the best idea that I got, and it's actually from a gentleman that you're going to see a, uh, uh, later on in this slideshow. He had a, uh, um, uh, uh, he has a testimonial in here. His name is his name's Chuck from Creative Promotions, and this is what he did. He bought the printer, highlighted 20 companies that he wanted to go after, and I have a list of them in here, and I'm happy to send it to you uh, after the webinar. But on this list, there's these, we highlight the top markets, and he highlighted these 20 companies. Call it every bar, restaurant, fire department, police department, school, anything that you can think of, any place that you can think of that would buy shirts. And he printed out 20 shirts. He printed a generic image that was uh, represented to the time that he was going out. So for 4th of July, he, he printed the, uh, you know, save some fireworks or something like that. I think actually when he was telling me this, it was during Christmas, so he was doing Christmas trees. Um, but down on the bottom, he down on the bottom, he highlighted what set himself apart. Kind of what I was just saying before: no minimum order, unlimited colors, free customization and personalization, twenty-four hour turnaround time. He highlighted what set himself apart from everybody else, and he dropped the shirts off. He gave them for free. He used 20 cents worth of ink, and he bet some cheap shirts that he picked up for a buck fifty, buck seventy. It was under two bucks per shirt, and he gave it to him for free. Did a little sales pitch, hey, you know, and on some cases, you know, he would pick up an order right there on the spot as he dropped him off, and and that was great. But here's the true brilliance of it: he did that once a week, 20 stores for the first 90 days, 
In that first 90 days, he generated enough business to keep him to pay for his machine and to keep him busy moving into the next year. The brilliance of this is that nobody throws away a shirt. It's the best marketing material you can ever have, and it only costs you two bucks a shirt. You can spend all the money you want on flyers and business cards and do that. Go for it. I mean, if you feel like that's really paying off for you, continue to do it. But nobody will throw away a shirt. He put it to me like this. He said, Adam, if you're at a trade show and you hand out 100 business cards, how many people are really going to give, keep those business cards? He goes, I bet, you know, you're a nice guy, but I bet five or ten probably end up keeping it. The other ones end up in the trash, on the desk, down in between a, a seat, uh, in the car cushion, wherever. But you hand out 100 shirts, and nobody is going to uh, throw away a shirt. It may end up in the rag bag, closet, dresser, whenever. point is, when they pull it out six months later when they're washing their car, oh, yeah, I got that shirt. This guy can do it. And he picked up that residual business, and it kept him busy. Now he doesn't do that every week like he did when he started. He probably does it once a month. But he's built up a customer base that is constantly needing it. And it was a great idea, and I encourage all of you to be. That's the first thing you should do when you get your printer. Print 20 shirts and take it out and highlight what makes your, you different. It's a great way to pick up extra business. So moving on, near, near zero turnaround and personalization. Eliminate lead time, ship times, and middlemen from the equation, of course. Why would you want to outsource your profits, right? If you can do it for cheaper, uh, just by having a, a piece of equipment in a, that's four feet by four feet, why not do it? So some operational advantages. Um, easy to learn. Many startups use. Uh, I mean, this isn't, you know, huge rocket science. Uh, we give you training for it. It's not uh, incredibly difficult. Uh, you go through a training uh, either here or on site with you where you're at, and uh, you'll be good. Um, give yourself a, a few days to get your feet under you. Lean on our, te our free lifetime technical support for the first couple of weeks, and it doesn't even have to be printer-related. It could be graphic-related. It could be software-related. It doesn't matter what it is. Call us. Use us. We are a big tool for you. And trust me when I tell you, we want you to be better with the printer. We want you to be more efficient with the printer. And it's not just because we're nice guys. The better you are with the printer, the more ink you buy, the more printers you buy in the future, the more your business grows. It's a win-win for everybody. So lean on us. Um, minimal footprint in your office, uh, garage, shopper, van. Uh, the Sprint has a footprint of three feet by three feet. You just heard me say the Empower is four feet by four feet. Uh, differentiate your business sample shirts. That's what I mentioned before. And as little, days, as little as 90 days to pay off per our customers. And it's, that's not a pie in the sky type of remark. I mean, this happens consistently. As little as 90 days to pay off. And it really boils down to you doing these three things. When you get the printer, get adequate training through us. Make sure of it. I'll make sure of it. If you're one of my customers, you will have adequate training guaranteed. Um, Use the marketing strategy that I just mentioned to you, okay? Going out and dropping off, differentiating yourself. And upsell your value. Match what they're currently getting, like I was using the example with the school, but then add the personalization and customization aspect of it to increase your margins. You do those three things and uh, the, the sky's the limit. You will pay the machine off in 90 days. So let's look at the industry as a whole. Uh, this was done, um, and, and just so you know, a lot of the information that I'm put, putting down here, this is not Anagent compiled information. This is uh, third-party uh, companies. Uh, uh, this one in particular is from an industry, uh, from a, uh, a think tank basically called itstrategies.com. Uh, you can check out their website. Their information is down there on the bottom. Uh, but they essentially said that uh, we had a 45% market share that Anagent did worldwide, uh, which uh, we thought was a little high, to be honest with you, but we'll take it. <laughs> we uh, in, in thought it was more about 40%. Uh, and then in the U.S., they estimated that we had a 60% market share, and I'm sure you can see some of our competitors on there that you probably recognize. Um, but I'll point this out to you to let you know that we're not, um, uh, we're an industry leader. We are 
on the leading edge of the technology, we are, are, are taking this uh, industry forward at uh, 100 miles an hour, and you want to be with the most innovative group uh, that is Anagen. Okay. So I'm going to go into a couple different markets. I'm not going to go into a lot of the details about this, only because they don't uh, represent everybody that's listening. But I will. Uh, but there is things that cross over. So it's important to understand that uh, this is a. If the, if you're familiar with this background or you're in this background, um, you'll you'll find it very easy to translate. And for those that aren't, uh, there's still some some nuggets of gold in here. But Let's first look at it from a commercial printer standpoint. Currently, your commercial printer, whether it's a wide format, um, offset, whatever the case might be, your technology that you're currently using, very similar to the technology that we're using. Printers are essentially are printers. Okay? Yeah, there's subtle differences here and there, but inkjet is inkjet. Uh, similar software, so you'll have a much faster learning curve than most. Uh, you have similar market expectations, demands for faster turnaround times, one-stop shop, avoid outsourcing whenever possible, can't afford to uh, turn away business. We get this more than any other customers that call in, and not just commercial printers, but from everybody. They always constantly tell us, I can't afford to turn away this business anymore. I have to be able to do it all. Whether I'm an embroidery, screen printing, commercial printing, doesn't matter. I have to be able to deliver to these customers. They're going somewhere else and somebody's delivering for them and taking my business from them. High customization and personalization, which you understand. And the main difference, obviously, by doing that, you create bigger margins. Screen printers and embroiderers, why you guys get it. Market expectations, mass personalization, market of one. Again, like I was saying before, think about the largest online retailers. Okay, they're doing garment printing. They're charging. I bought a I bought a shirt off a of cafe press as a uh, as a gag gift on a weekend for a, a friend of mine, and uh, I paid thirty two dollars with shipping for one shirt. Thirty two dollars. Granted, shipping was seven bucks, but thirty two dollars. It probably cost them all of two dollars to make that shirt. Fast learning curve. You understand colors and garments, and you can modify graphics and digitals. So you know this is really big for screen printers and embroiderers. You guys, where you'll have a competitive edge over uh, some other people, is that you get the idea of what a high quality shirt should look like, what the image is designed to look like, and how it should uh, should fit on a shirt. For embroidery, you understand, um, uh, you know, the digitizing side of things. You know, everything's now um, on embroidery is digitized. So, you get you get colors. Screen printers, you get colors. For the but the main differences here is screen printers say yes to every short order. Why turn it away? Embroiderers print a sample faster than a sew out. No backing, no hooping, no cutting, trimming, no assigning thread. Start doing the things that are easy and most profitable. One operator versus two or three. Local screen printer, unless you're doing it yourself, how many, how many operators do you have doing it if you're doing high volume? Now have one person doing all of that. Enable full color digital print at high volumes. You know, unfortunately, and I guess not unfortunately, but for the past few years, direct garment printing has been solely a small run type uh, avenue for most people to go. It's not anymore. Okay, I have a printer that can print a shirt in 15 to 20 seconds, and it could be a million colors. Okay, we're at the point now where these printers are fast enough to be extremely competitive on large runs versus screen printing. So instead of, uh, instead of just thinking, oh, I'll just buy this for my 50 shirts and under, why not think about it and go, I'll buy this for my 500 shirts and under. It'll be easier, less cleanup, and I'll have the same cost and be able to deliver faster time frames and expand what I can actually offer. The technology has gotten to that point. How about your promotional products, people, that are outsourcing? 
Well, you know just as well as anybody. You know, but promotional products people actually, they're kind of my favorite because they're salespeople. They're, they understand about going out there and knocking on doors kind of thing. And you know that you what your customers want. They want speed, customization, personalization. They're always seeking a, bit, a greater variety in products, colors, and designs that they can offer their base. But your biggest advantage is, like I just said, is how to sell. You know. You know that if you go out there with 20 shirts, like I said before, 20 shirts a week, you can go out there and pick up business. The difference will be is instead of outsourcing it and having your margin be only 25%, now you can do it yourself and have your margin be 75%. And the difference is, instead of you waiting two weeks to get your product to give to your customer, you do it yourself and have your product to your customer in a few days. And remember, that creates value. And when you create value, you can charge more. So now your margins, instead of them just being, oh, I'm still charging the same price, you say, I'll have it to you in two weeks at 10 bucks a shirt. But I could have it to you in a day and a half or two days for 12 bucks a shirt. That's powerful. And if you're not, and, and this, this, this talks to everybody that's listening right now. Think about this. We are a culture of convenience. We want everything now. We don't want to wait for anything. Think about this for a second. Does anybody have a DVR, a TiVo? What are we, fast forwarding through commercials now? That's what I'm talking about. You want to you want information, you jump on your computer, you Google it. It's immediate. You don't have to go down to the library and figure things out. The old way is an archaic way. People will pay for convenience. All you have to do is go out and show them that you can do that. You want it now, you have to get it now. It's one of the best one of the best ways to upsell any product that you're putting out. So what are some other products? Well, we got a group here. They're part of our applications department, and their whole job is to play with the printer. My personal opinion is they have the coolest job in the entire company. They get to mess around with the printer. Uh, and they've come up with a lot of different cool things to do. We've been able to print on glass, wood, metal. Uh, we've done uh, metallic prints, foil prints is what we call them. Print on canvas, even hats. Uh, there's also 3D printing. Uh, which is really uh, kind of cool. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff, and all this stuff is available to you. And we teach you how to do it. We have webinars on how to do it. Uh, we have uh, tutorials when you purchase the uh, um, uh, the items needed to do it that show you how to get the results that you want. But basically, in the end, all it does is it expands what you can offer. It shows you what you can do more because every you know what printing a shirt, printing a sweatshirt, sweats, jeans, whatever that's that's great. But what if you could do picture frames, or do some canvas uh, prints? These are all things that you have the capability to do, and offer more to your to your customers. Okay, addressable markets and. Um, Feel free to email me this, email me, and I'll make sure that I get you this list. In fact, I'm going to type in my email right now. Um, send to all. Sorry, guys, just want to make sure everybody has that. I just typed in my email um, right now and sent it to you. Uh, I'll make sure I get you this list. Um, this is These are the customers you go after. Now, this is from SGIA. Uh, which is a uh, one of the biggest shows we do, a huge organization um, that is basically identified primary markets reported as steady or growing within the next three years. The top three, or I'm sorry, the top four are in bold. Schools, corporate branding, nonprofits, athletic teams. The first, like I said, when I was, the first thing I would do is I'd highlight those 20 companies and go to them. My first 20 companies would fit in those four bold ones. Then I'd work my way out, food services, health care, hospitality, transit, business to consumer, ad agencies. These are, these are the areas you want to market to. OK, Empower, our baby. The Energet Empower 
there's actually two of them. There's the MP5 and the MP10. They're the fastest direct-to-garment printers in the industry. Rapid return on investment, free first-class technical support and training. And remember, you're working with the manufacturer. You're not working with a dealer or a distributor. You're actually working with the people that built the thing. Endless possibilities with our extended media, foil, 3D art, the stuff that I showed you on the previous slide. And made, manufactured, serviced, engineered, and supported all here in the USA. The only garment printer that is. We service all of our stuff and, uh, and build all of our stuff in our manufacturing plant here in Costa Mesa where I'm sitting. So we come out with updates to our printers, firmware, software, and otherwise. All these updates, once you have our printers, free to you. Okay. Anytime we come out with a new, uh, new cool twist to something, we give it to you for free. Uh, if it's printer related. Um, one of the more recent ones is we were able to uh, increase uh, the speed of the printer slightly uh, with a new firmware version. We sent out a notification to all of our customers to upload the latest firmware. You upload the latest firmware, you speed up your prints. Our, more, our, our most, most recent one that we had was the i-series upgrade. And what we did is we improved upon Anajet's patented closed loop ink delivery system um, and basically did a few different things. I don't want to get into the minutiae of it, but this is essentially what we did. We made it easier to fill the printer. Okay, instead of it taking 20 minutes when you first got it, now it takes five to 10. Better ink flow while printing. All right, we installed what's called damp double dampers in the system. And what that does is that the reservoir of ink that is in the that is near the printhead, there's more ink there, so it so it makes sure that you have enough ink to print as much as you want. Uh, improved print quality with even better color fidelity. This is huge. We did ICC profiles. It took us forever. We used something called a spectrometer. Literally the most. I'm glad I didn't have to do it. It was the most mundane, tedious thing. I've ever seen, where you literally comb through millions and millions and millions of colors hundreds of times to make sure that you're getting the exact color that is represented on the screen. It is so ridiculously tedious, I, tedious, I can't even imagine. But we did it, and now our colors, what you see is what you get. It matches. Uh, less ink and, flu and, and flush consumption when flushing and filling. Uh, normal maintenance routines, essentially the idea with that is that we're reducing the amount of ink waste, which means greater ink economy, which means higher profits for you, uh, which in turn re means an equal uh, uh, equals lower cost of ownership. So that's from the ne an, an ink flow standpoint, but we weren't done there. We also upgraded a few components. Now we did some testing on uh, some of our components, and we had uh, these valves. These valves that uh, had about, uh, they would go in, uh, they, 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 it's where the cartridge meets the lines, at about a 5% fail rate. That's too high. So about 5% of the customers that would get these printers, they, the valves would fail on them, and we'd have to replace the valves. Uh, and so we said, you know what, forget that. We're going to get more reliable check valves uh, and redesign it so that we have a 0% fail rate on it. And that's what we did. We also improved the maintenance station for more durability. A more robust wiper blade. I really call it wiper arm here, but wiper blade, same thing. Uh, to make sure that your true, it's when it's doing its cleaning, it's truly cleaning it uh, and wiping away all the excess ink. New wiper arm actuator guidance design. Uh, he said, I don't want to get into the whole minutia of it, but essentially it's, uh, it's uh, um, for greater alignment. Uh, improved firmware for efficiency and ease of use. New improved uh, efficiency clean routines, easier to use startup, time startup fill options. Um, essentially, if there's anything you can take away from this, we basically are constantly improving the printer. The printer was amazing six months ago. It was amazing six months prior to that. But we constantly are making it better. 
we are constantly trying to improve the efficiency for you. For you, uh, for us, it's a win-win for everybody. So um, we devote a lot of time and resources into it. And you know what? Six months from now, it'll probably be, be faster. But that is free to you down the road, and that's why we do it. It's kind of like every if any of you have any Apple products where every time you plug it into your computer, you have a new update or new upgrade for a certain uh, software or something like that, or, or anybody that has apps on their phone and those are constantly being updated. It's the same thing. The technology moves so rapidly that if we didn't do this for you, your printer would be out of date in six months. So we have to constantly keep you on the cutting edge. And it's, it's, it's only beneficial because, it, I mean, it's beneficial for you, but for us, the way we look at it is the more that you're doing, the better that you're working, the more advanced that you're going with this, uh, this printer, the better, um, the more ink you buy, the more efficient you are with your, your customer base, the, uh, the more printers you buy down the road. So that's, how I, that's why I say it's looked at as a win-win. We also just had a software update. That's the one on the bottom. It said uh, improves Anarip by adding a new super fine print mode for improved quality uh, with less than optimal nozzles. Essentially what that means is if I'm printing on a sweatshirt, I don't need a super fine mode. I can just do my standard. But if I'm printing on something that is as fine as canvas, you want really fine detail, that's where the super fine comes in so that you can get uh, really, really fine detail there. So quick recap, free lifetime software and firmware upgrades. Anytime we make improvements, we give it to you. A continued tradition of free training. Free lifetime technical support. Lean on it, especially in the first couple of weeks. There's no hidden setup fees. There's also no mandatory site visits. This is not a piece of equipment that anybody can't pull out and by following a few simple instructions, load the ink and start printing within the first 10 to 15 minutes of, the, of, of taking it out of the box. And no other BTG manufacturer offers what we deliver, specifically because they all sell through dealers and distributors, but more so you're working directly with us as a manufacturer and we're here to help you grow your business. That's why we do these webinars as well. Okay, software. Uh, the Empower software, drag and drop media into the application. Uh, it'll accept any pretty much any Adobe file, PNG, TIFF, uh, JPEG, just take it, drag it right into there. Um, it has an ink cost calculator, so even before you print it, it'll tell you how much ink is going to be used and what it's costing you. Uh, you have advanced art customization in adjusting the brightness, the opacity, the lightness, the contrast. You can even adjust color saturation. Uh, there's the super fine mode. On the uh, um, control panel of the printer itself, not on the software, you have an LCD preview screen. That's the thing right below the uh, software box that you see there, uh, which will allow you to see job selections and will actually preview what you're printing prior to it printing. So you can see it there and you can even move it on the screen from there. That also uh, LCD preview on the printer the control panel has eight gigs of memory. So if you have a lot of repeat business, you can just store your images there and not have to rip them every single time. You can just have them already done on your uh, printer itself. Okay, print speeds on the Empower. Uh, now, we are incredibly conservative and don't go to our fastest. If I really wanted to print my fastest, I could dust these times, but they're still faster than everybody else. Uh, but they're printing at uh, what we call our, our default settings, which is what you'll probably use every day anyway. So on the MP10, a uh, typical white shirt takes about 20 seconds. Dark shirt, about 40 seconds. Okay, that's unheard of. There's no other printer that can print that fast. MP5, double those times. 40 seconds for a white, minute 30 for a dark. Reasonable output, 10 hours per day, 5 days per week and the, that'll give you your category. Now, if you're wondering which printer is going to be the right fit for me, a couple things to consider. Look at what you could do on a per day, per month basis right there, okay? If you legitimately are going to be printing 400 plus shirts a day 
don't even look at the Empower 5, just get the 10, because the time alone will save you, you know, tenfold. If you're under 200, uh, 400 shirts a day, maybe the MP5 is, is up your alley, okay? One thing to consider, because the MP10 is twice as fast as the MP5. If you have a job that takes you four hours on the MP5, it'll take you two on the MP10, okay? You have to put what is more valuable to you, your time or the initial investment. So it's up to you. I'm happy to help in putting all that information together to help guide you to what you think would be the right fit, but think about that. Um, in addition to getting you all those software upgrades, we also have an upgrade program for the MP5 to the MP10. So, if, and about half my customers take advantage of it. <clears throat> they buy the 5. Some they don't need to and the 5 works fine. But about half my MP5 customers upgrade to the 10 within the first six months. Something to think about. Um, and it's, uh, and that worked out well for them because it was a smaller initial investment to get the 5. Uh, and then as their business grew, they upgraded to the, to the 10 and increased their production. All right, so the Sprint. Now, the Sprint is the top-selling direct garment printer in the industry. There are more Anajet Sprints out there than any other printer manufactured, but uh, we're doing our darndest to get as many M-Powers uh, to pass it. Um, literally, there are thousands of, of Sprints out there worldwide. Uh, first release in 2009 with the second generation Rev-B. Um, very reliable, uh, very good quality prints. Uh, requires more maintenance than the uh, Empower. Uh, light and portable, smaller footprint. Uh, it's only 82 pounds, which is nice, and we have a lot of customers that take it on the road. So if that's something you're thinking about doing, Sprint might be the way to go. And somebody has a three foot by three foot uh, uh, footprint. We've had customers report anywhere from weeks to five months to reach their return on investment. And can do all the different shirts and substrates that I mentioned before. So the glass, all that stuff. Excuse me. So print speeds on the Sprint. Obviously a little older technology, a little slower. Like I mentioned before, the print that uh, uh, back in the, uh, you know, a couple of years back, it was all thought that uh, garment printing was only for small runs. Well, that's because these were the speeds that uh, garment printing was at. 60 to 90 seconds for a white shirt, 2 to 3 minutes for a dark. And there's your per day, per month, per year. Just so you're aware, too, all of these speeds are based off a, uh, um, a digital equipment evaluation by SGIA. Um, they, did, uh, they tested all of our equipment. And these are the speeds they come up with, not ones that we came up with. If you're thinking about a Sprint and you fall into this category, this might be one that you want to look at. Sprint's a fantastic printer. I can't stress it enough. Like I said, there's more of those than anything out there. But if you want the latest and greatest, you've got to jump to the Empower. So the business case, the cost of ownership, what I said before, the economics of it all. Fully loaded cost. Now, okay, before I get into this, this is all from Creative Promotions. This is what they have an average. This is what they figured out over, I think it was over the course of 2012. Fully loaded cost of a printed white shirt was $2.50 at $3, varying on the blank type and the graphic size. He had an average retail price of $15 to $18. Gross profit of $12 per shirt with a payoff of, on the Sprint, it's about 1,500 shirts. On the 5, 2,500 shirts. And on the 10, 3,500 shirts. The key to success on this, though, Quality output, volume, and efficient production. And how do you do that? You take advantage of the tools that we give you here at Anajet. You lean on our technical support. You make sure that we, you get the adequate training that you need. And you go out and use the marketing ideas that I discussed. <coughs> you do that, and you will pay it off in 90 days. You will. There's no doubt in my mind. But you have to go out and do it. Because remember, this is just a tool. So here's a couple of testimonials. Um, Henry Landau, uh, he has uh, he had the Sprint first, and it took him uh, five months to achieve ROI. And they feel so strongly about the machine that they say it prints money. Um, you couldn't pay us to replace this machine until the Empower 5 came out, uh, and now they love their Empower. 
It printed over 2,000 shirts since receiving the new I-Series three weeks ago uh, with outstanding results. 250,000 in 17 months. It's pretty good gross sales. Here's Creative Promotions. This is a gentleman that I told you that, that uh, went uh, dropped off the 20 shirts. Um, finished their first full production run on the MP5, and they ran 250 of the attached graphic. That's that flower, uh, heart, butterfly graphic. They ran 250 of the attached graphic in five hours. They had a 0% fallout rate. Think about that for just two seconds. They printed 250 shirts, and 250 went to the customer. Not one shirt was messed up. That's powerful. The ink will cost 19 cents. They paid $1.45 for the shirt with 19 cents worth of ink at $10 per hour because he has he hired uh, um, some kids to come in after school to, uh, to print for him. He has 20 cents in labor per shirt for a total cost of $1.84. $1.45 for the shirt, $0.19 cents for ink, $0.20 cents in labor. He had a resale of $13 per shirt, gave him a profit of $11.16 per shirt. That's profit. That's not what he sold it for. That's not the gross sale. That's profit. That In that five hours, he made $2,790 in profit. That's $500 an hour he was making plus, $500 plus an hour. That's better than what lawyers charge. If he did that five days a week, he would generate $725,000 uh, $725, in profit. Yeah, that would be nice. I don't know if anybody will ever do that, but that would be great. If you guys do do that, call me, and I'll, I'll, we'll put you down as a, uh, as a testimonial. Uh, but that's Chuck. Great guy, by the way, if anybody's ever met him. Uh, Eastern Shore Signs, another one of my customers, Andy Buckles. Uh, he's been in the printing industry since 1989, uh, has very familiar with it, uh, vinyl cutting, routing, uh, large format. He understands it all. But we put him up here because he only he lives in Cape Charles, Virginia, which is a beautiful area. But it's only a 1,200 population, and he's a one-man shop. And with only 1,200 people in June of 2012, 2012, he had $21,000 in total sales. And overnight, his Anajet printer caused a 35% increase in all his business. He was one of my customers that upgraded to an MP10 because he needed the production to do it. He went out there and made it happen for him. You know, it just goes to show you that there's a market everywhere. It doesn't matter if you have 500 people living in, in your town or 500,000. And it doesn't matter if there's 10 uh, screen printers out there. You're your own business. And trust me, there's more than enough business going around. Everybody wears shirts. The key is tapping into it, using the marketing um, ideas I gave you before. Here's Jason Bryan, another one of my customers. Screen printer swaps for an MPRO. The MP10 has improved productivity tenfold, so much that we had to buy more heat presses just to keep up. Now, uh, a lot of Jason's information is in a, a blog, and there's a video uh, that you can check out um, that goes through kind of his, his journey with uh, Anajet printers. Okay, Inksoft. So like I was telling you before, the web is a giant mall, and you want to have your store. This is what we mean by that, and this is, uh, this is what we do for you as, a, as, as you know, potential customers for Anajet. When you buy your printer, you get Inksoft. Inksoft is an online e-commerce website. Okay, Essentially, it's this. Your customers can go online, design their own shirts, upload their own graphics, pick from about 7,000 pieces of clip art that they, they, they'll have access to and you'll have access to, manipulate it, change it, design their own shirt, and send the order directly to you. It's a thousand dollar value for this license fee. Anajet pays for it. We pay you the grand for you. So you get it with purchase. Now, you in addition, you can create four customized websites for your various customers. This is huge for your places like schools, or take your top customers and give them their own personal website that they can order from, where all their own graphics, their own colors, and everything will be uploaded just for them. That creates value, like I was talking about before, and also shows them that you're there a priority for you. 
and you can use, they can have actually up to four with this Inksoft uh, Flex package. Enable them to design and order products. Upgrade to the e-commerce and network outsourcing capabilities. There's a, a more advanced version of it uh, for an extra $500. And to do it and to keep it, it's $149 a month. Now, why do we choose Inksoft? A few different reasons. The first thing is Inksoft looks legitimate. Like when you go on a website, you can tell if it's a legitimate looking website or if it's a cheap looking website. Inksoft looks legitimate. Okay. The second thing is there are other companies that do this kind of thing, but they take a percentage of your gross sales. So if you had, you know, five thousand dollars worth of sales that go through the website, they'll take a percentage of that. Um, and yeah, we all, I, I just felt like that, well, we felt, uh, Anagen felt that that was just a little too much. Inksoft just charges you a flat rate once a month, boom, 149 bucks, keeps it going. Now, it's completely up to you. You don't have to use this site, but I would recommend it. It's a very, very good way to add a sense of legitimacy to your business. If you don't already have a website, use it. If you do have a website, you can create a link on your website to this website so your customers can order their shirts online. Okay, a couple of upcoming events. Um, we have actually now 0% financing on the new Empower 5 and 10. Um, we can uh, talk to you a little bit of, more about it. Uh, that's going to be going through the end of the month. Uh, kind of nice. Uh, next up is ASI Chicago and NBM Long Beach and then NNEP Nashville. Uh, we're going to be at those three shows uh, this month. Um, and then we're also going to have a recorded uh, July webinar with Turn Your Website into a Selling Machine. That's going to be geared more towards the Inksoft. So once you have that all set up, it's probably a webinar that you're going to want to check out. Uh, but that's what we got going on this month here at Anajet. And uh, let's get to the Q&As. Uh, so any, t any questions at all, uh, throw them right through that questions box. I'll just start at the top. Uh, and go from there. Uh, let's see. Okay, I got one that says, it sounds like Anajet must be used daily or the system will not work properly. Is this true? It, I cannot be expected to be there every single day selling the machine for those of us who are single business owners. Any comments or suggestions? And that's from Craig. Yeah, Craig, um, it's not true. That's the simple answer, okay? There's, uh, Let's start with the Sprint. The Sprint has a closed loop, a closed loop uh, uh, ink delivery system. Essentially what that does is it vacuum seals the entire printer. You know, air contaminants can touch it. And let me actually take another step back. The main problem with all of this is white ink. Okay, white ink has a substance in it that's called titanium dioxide. It's what makes white white. It's the pigment in the ink, right? This pigment, look around where you're at right now. Anything that you see is white, it has titanium dioxide in it. But it has two things that it does that cause problems. The first thing that it does is as soon as it comes in contact with air, it starts to dry. I mean, quickly. And the best way I can describe it is if you've ever had a bucket of paint that you left the top off of, and you get that film right on top of it, that's the titanium dioxide reacting with the oxygen in the air. So we don't want that, right? We don't want that at all because we can't have this drying, especially prior to entering the printer. That's why all those printers that had those open bottled systems aren't around anymore because the titanium dioxide would gum up and as it traveled through the printer, it would clog the lines, the print heads and the dampers and everything like that. So what Anajet did is we vacuum sealed everything, cartridges, inner workings of the machine, everything. So no air, nothing, no contaminants, nothing can touch this ink until it's out onto the shirt big win for us. And we, we patented that back in 2009. But we took it a step further because the other thing that the, ti the titanium dioxide does is it's heavier than the rest of the ink. So if you let it sit too long, it'll literally sink to the very bottom of the lines of the cartridge. Okay, And you can actually see it. When you open it up, you'll see it'll be really, really bright white on the bottom and nice and clear on the top, which is the water, right? You don't want that. You want consistency out of your white ink. So with the Sprint, what you have to do is you've got to use the printer every two to three days. 
Otherwise, the ink settles. And if the ink settles, then you've got to blow out all that ink before you can start using it, before you can start getting good, consistent prints again. Otherwise, your prints aren't going to look good. So that's where that comes from. Now, Anajet is the only one in the market that says you don't have to use your printer every day. And it's because of this closed-loop uh, closed loop delivery uh, system that we have. And with the Sprint, you got you just got to use it every two to three days. Now, the Empower. We took it a step further. We built something called a closed-loop circulating ink delivery system. And it's a fancy way of saying that everything's vacuum sealed just like the Sprint. But we added pumps to circulate the ink, to constantly keep the ink moving. So it never has a chance to settle in the lines. So every hour when the printer's not being used, these pumps are engaged, and it circulates the ink so that you constantly keep the white ink from settling. Because of this, with the Empower, you have a once-a-week maintenance. That's it. Once a week. Okay, and with this once a week maintenance, the only thing you have to do, you clean your wiper blade off, all the excess ink build up. You clean off the maintenance station where the seals are that prevent the air from coming in contact with the tip of the printhead. And you clean off the nozzle plate where any ink that might have built up where the, uh, that's the tip of the printhead as well. If you are as thorough as possible, it'll take you about 15 minutes to do that. But be thorough. Don't neglect it. It's once a week. Make sure you do it. You do that, you'll never have a problem with white ink. You'll never have a problem getting consistent, uh, good quality prints. But the minute you, you neglect it, it's a snowball effect. It'll start affecting other components in the printer. Be thorough. Be diligent with it. You'll never have an issue. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Uh, can I access the slide deck after the webinar? Um, you know, Reed, it's going to be posted on our website. So uh, you'll be able to actually record or listen to the whole thing. Uh, Marcelo asked, does Anajet offer wholesale t-shirts? Um, we don't, but I have a list of companies that I recommend. Um, I'd be happy to send them over to you. Um, my email address, I know I sent it, but it's A T I P R E at anajet.com. Uh, before Caleb asks, uh, before I forget, what is the largest size you can print on um, on the different machines? Um, Caleb, uh, did you send me an email this morning? I think I might have gotten something from you. Um, anyway, the, the largest size you can print on an Empower is 18 by 14 in one pass. Now, if you want to go bigger than that, you can't. Um, but you'll have to separate it into two passes. In fact, I got a really cool tutorial that'll show you how to do it. Now, on the Sprint, it's 16 by 12 and a half in one pass. Which is still pretty substantial. But like I said, if you want to go bigger than that, uh, there's a tutorial to show you how to do it. Uh, Stephanie, do you have samples of websites that you have created? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, in fact, if you want to shoot me an email or shoot whoever your regional manager is here an email, they'll be able to send you a couple examples. Uh, Marcelo asks, does the Sprint offer foil printing capability? Yes, it does. The Sprint and the Empower both can do foil, no problem. Uh, Don, does your RIP software work on Mac platforms? Um, as of right now, Don, this is a really good question because I just had a meeting about this last week. Um, as of right now, it doesn't. But uh, we are in talks and starting to work on development so that you can work on uh, directly on a Mac. We're creating a driver for it. Um, in the meantime, you can use Boot Camp or Parallels, or you can have a PC do all your design work in your Mac and transfer it over. It's up to you. There's more than one way to skin a cap, but once we do have Mac capability, you'll obviously be getting it for free. Uh, was, uh, Gabe asked, was hoping to see the machine in action. Hopefully you can go to one of those shows, Gabe, um, or you can check out some of the videos and stuff that we have on our website. Uh, Miko has is from the East Coast, and how how would I get training and proper use of this product, guys? We have field technicians all over the country, okay, and that's how we set it up. You can come out here to California if you want. In fact, it's been kind of nice. I mean, it is summer in California, um, but 
if it's too much for you, I can have somebody come to you, train you on, on site. It's no problem. Just let me know what works best for you. Uh, Jeff, pricing. Smart. I can't believe I didn't mention it, but yeah. Uh, the sprint. Real quickly, for all those that are hopefully, st you know, I think a couple people logged off, but anybody that's affiliated with this webinar, you automatically get special pricing. I have you listed here, and I'm going to have your information. You're going to get special pricing. So when you, after this webinar, if you want to take advantage of uh, the webinar promo pricing, call up your regional manager, let them know you attended the webinar and that you get special pricing. Um, but for the MSRP of the printers, the Sprint is 18450 The Empower 5 is 29950 and the Empower 10 is 39950 But let me stress this again. If, for all those that logged on to this webinar are getting very, very aggressive promotional pricing. Now, we tailor it to your needs. So it's best to call up your, your regional manager and get an idea of what you actually need and what position you're in. But call us up and we'll put something together that will save you thousands upon thousands. Uh, let's see. How soon can I get a machine in my hands? Uh, if it's ordered today, Caleb, I could have a machine to you within, I think it's a, a five-day business, uh, a five, five business days to reach you in Hawaii. Uh, Rashawn Miller, how often do the nozzles need to be replaced? Um, probably mean print heads. Uh, well, the print heads are good for about 200,000 prints. So it depends on how long it takes you to do 200,000 prints. Um, I would estimate anywhere between five to seven years before you have to replace the print heads. Uh, will you discuss the peripheral equipment needed to run production at top speeds? Um, Don, there's a, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and um, it's probably a little bit more, uh, there's a lot of different variables, I should say. Um, there, if you're really trying to maximize your production, there's a few things that you can do to increase uh, your overall production rate. One is you can use a tunnel dryer uh, as opposed to a heat press. A heat press might slow you down a little bit, especially if you're trying to run MP10s. A lot of it, too, can be dependent on the graphic itself and what the intended result of the graphic is supposed to look like. If there's a lot of intricate detail, if it's very basic, these things can make a, make a significant difference. Um, so I, I guess you can give me a call or whoever your RM is here, and, and we, you can dive into that more offline, but there's a lot of different ways. There's also some things you can turn off on the printer to increase the speed of the printer, safety mechanisms that are put into the printer so that we take some of the uh, headache out of it for you, but uh, we can turn those things off that will increase the speed. Um, so we can talk about that a little more offline and make it more specific to you, but I'll We'll crush any any of our competitors, and we'll get you a pretty nice uh, um, uh, speed out of it. Uh, Shelly asks, any fabric restrictions on garments that can't be printed in any of the machines, like safety shirts that come with the reflective stripping already on it? Yeah, Shelly, that's a good, 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 good question. It is water-based ink, okay, which essentially means this. Any natural fibers, you're gold. <laughs> Anything with a natural fiber, you're gold. So cotton. Uh, hemp, uh, anything like that, you're in great shape, even if it's a blend. When you get to 100% synthetic fabrics, you're better off on going on lighter side synthetic fabrics, like 100% um, polyester white shirt. Um, when you start to go with dark black or blue, we don't market that we can do it. We have a system on how to do it, and we can show, and I can show it to you. We don't push it, though, um, just because we feel like there still needs to be more development and we're not 100% on it. We're about 95% on it. You can do it, but you'll struggle. Struggle. Reflective stuff, that stuff usually has a pretty thick plastic coating on it, um, which means the only way that you're going to do anything on that is probably vinyl, Okay, uh, so a vinyl cutter. Um, and that's just kind of the reality of it. It's where it's at. Uh, Marcelo, um, webinar special price for the Sprint and the Empower. Um, we'll have to talk about it more offline, but there's because we we make it specific to what you what you need. 
Uh, there's, you can have cash discounts, free accessories, or both, depending on how we set it up. So really, it's just one of those things where you, you give us a call and we'll figure it out um, offline to, to tailor to what you're looking at. But I, like I said before, I literally will save you thousands upon thousands. Uh, Reed asked, what keeps the ink from drying on the faceplate of the printhead during the idle time, especially after several days? Fantastic question. You know what it does? The maintenance station. Right around the maintenance station where the print head rests, there are little seals that seal off any air contamination from touching the tips of the print head. Okay? So that maintenance station in itself, is that's why I said it's once a week thing that you have to clean, because you have to make sure that there's no ink buildup on those seals that could potentially break the seal from the tip of the print head. Now, that being said, you still have to keep those nozzles wet. So once a, once a day, what will happen is the maintenance station will drop, the print head will slide over, and it will spit a little bit of ink out of the tip of the nozzles. Now, we've calculated how much ink it actually spits when it does this, and it's the equivalent of about 10 cents worth of ink. So if you let the thing sit idle, you'd have about 10 cents worth of ink waste a day. Compared to our competitors of 4 or $5, it's a pretty slick move. But that's a great question because you still keep the nozzles wet, and as long as your seals are, are clean, which is why I said don't mess around with the, um, the maintenance, do it and be thorough about it, you will seal off everything, and your nozzles will be wet, and you'll never have that drying of your, of your nozzle plate. Now, just on a side note, and this isn't an excuse to do it, but if you did forget it, we do have something that is, is called a heavy clean on the Empower. Okay? The Empower print heads are incredibly robust and incredibly in industrial commercial print heads. They can withstand a significant amount of pressure. So if you neglect your maintenance and you do clog up the print head, you can do this heavy clean and reclaim your print heads. It's almost impossible to clog these print heads fully. I mean, you'd really have to let the thing sit for six months without touching it. But don't use that as an excuse because doing that can waste a significant amount of ink, which will cost you money. Just do the weekly maintenance. It'll save you all the time and effort in the world. Uh, let's see. Uh, are maintenance and software use training sessions available through a webinar? Yeah, Tony, they are. Um, absolutely. We have videos. Uh, it's not actually a webinar. It's a video. Um, and they'll be on our, our website. Um, Caleb, great. Hey, uh, Caleb, do me a favor and email me uh, your phone number. Um, and uh, we can touch base after this webinar and talk more about it if you're still on. Uh, I have an issue printing on white shirts. The black comes across as dark gray. How do I resolve this? Um, Mr. Martinez, I don't know which printer you have, um, but call our support line. And it might be just as simple, something as simple as, uh, as a setting. There's color modes that are built into both printers that can um, get you uh, uh, basically pull directly just off the black cartridge instead of pulling a CMYK black. Uh, training for business in Florida, no problem, Rick. Call us up. I'll get somebody out to you. Uh, we can get you training. It could be uh, built in. Uh, Hans asks, Inksoft, I'm confused. It says that the license is included. Now it seems there is still a monthly fee. What is it included in the license and what costs extra? Yeah, Hans, okay. So the license is basically you're paying, well, Anajet's paying once to allow you to use Inksoft's website. The that they're going to build a personal website for you. That's the $1,000, okay? And we're going to pay it for you. You're going to have access to all of their clip art for free, all of that stuff by paying that 1000 bucks. If you want to keep it going and you want, because they're housing the server and everything that is supporting the website and the unlimited bandwidth, if you want to keep it going, it's $149 a month. Uh, Rick, do you lease equipment for startup businesses? We do. Yeah, I have some contacts for you. Give me a call or your regional manager, and I'll make sure I, uh, I do that. Um, uh, Mr. Martinez asked, do you have a tutorial on foil technique? We do, um, but I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Do a light white coat, a heavy color coat, and then match 
a similar color to the foil. For example, if you're printing using red foil, print red where you're going to be doing it. Then cut out the foil while it's, on, while it's still wet on the printer, the ink on the printer. Cut out the foil, put it where you want it to be, put a piece of parchment paper down, clamp it down under the heat press, and then let it cool, and then pull it off after the heat press is, uh, is done running through its 90 seconds. Now here's a little tip. If you want it to be really bright red foil, really bright, and just be mostly foil, increase the pressure on the heat press. If you want the foil just to be kind of off glistening just a little bit, decrease the pressure. The more pressure, the more foil that sticks to the shirt. The less pressure, the less foil that sticks to the shirt. So you can get a couple different looks. Uh, Craig asked, can you email me the webinar document? Um, yeah, I think I have, uh, I, I can send it off to you. Just uh, shoot me an email and I'll get it back to you. Uh, Keith asked, what temperature must be maintained for the machine and the ink? Um, you know, there's temperate climates. I mean, you know, I wouldn't take it to Death Valley or in freezing conditions, uh, but most climates throughout the, uh, the country are, are fine. The biggest thing is humidity. Um, the printer is water-based ink, uses water-based ink, so if it's dry, the water and the ink will evaporate and become tacky. If it's humid, the water and the ink doesn't evaporate. So if your concern is uh, climate control, say you're in like Arizona where it's dry, go out, buy a humidifier, they're about 150 bucks, stick it right next to the printer and keep the humidity in that area up and you'll be in good shape. Uh, Jeff asked, does it work well with Corel Draw? Yeah, man, no problem. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with, use it. Uh, oh, on the safety shirts, uh, Shelly said it's not on the reflective material, but on the fabric next to it. Um, I have several customers asking me about this exact kind of shirt project. You know, we'd have to test it, uh, Shelly. Um, what kind of fabric is next to those shirts or next to the reflective material? And then um, it doesn't matter how you're printing on whether it's screen printing, garment printing, transfers, whatever, you're going to have to have some sort of heat source. Um, so we'd have to find out if that heat source will damage the reflective material. So it really just becomes a testing thing. Uh, and we can figure it out. Uh, Marcelo has, do you offer maintenance contracts? We do, Marcelo. Um, and I can go over it in a little bit more. Um, uh, if you want one-on-one, -on -one, uh, it, it is pretty extensive. And there's a few different options that we ha have. But keep in mind, we give all of our customers free lifetime tech support, free lifetime software upgrades, free lifetime firmware upgrades, and the free training. Marcel asked, can I convert a low resolution to the high resolution? And you can't. I'm sorry, Marcel, you can't do that. But I have a company called artworksource.com that for 15 bucks will take your low resolution file and turn it into a beautiful high resolution image. Uh, Stephanie asked about uh, payment plans, lease options. Yeah, Stephanie, uh, shoot me an email or your RM, and they can put you in contact with the people that you need to discuss to, to figure out a... Um, uh, you know, a, a lease option or finance option for you. Uh, Reed asked what, you know, Reed asked what, what resolution is needed for printing pictures uh, for acceptable printing. Read anything over 300 dpi is usually good uh, for the graphic. Um, most digital cameras um, will work just fine. I've even taken pictures of people on my iPhone and printed it on a shirt, uh, and that works okay. The rule of thumb here though, is the higher resolution, the better. So, uh, you know, if you can get, at, at some point it becomes mute, though, because of the substrate that you're printing on. But if you can do anything 300 dpi or more, you're going to be in great, in great uh, uh, shape. Uh, Caleb asked, heat press recommendations and costs. You know, there's a lot of different heat presses, and they all perform pretty much the same thing. I have heat presses from $500 to $1,500. Um, I like George Knight. Uh, we do just started carrying this new heat press that seems to be working pretty well. Um, but my preference is George Knight heat presses. So, um, All right. I can't believe it. Is that all the questions? You guys made it easy on me. Look, guys, I just want to thank you very much for stopping by uh, and jumping on this uh, webinar. Uh, thanks for taking the time out. 
if you have any direct questions that I can help answer, please feel free to email me at A-T-I-P-R-E at Anajet.com. Um, I'm happy to help in any way that I can, or if you're already working with somebody, feel free to contact them there. Uh, keep in mind, for all those that attended the webinar, you will get special promotional pricing. So reach out to your RM and myself to find out exactly what that is and how we can tailor it to your needs. Uh, there is a time limit on it on how long it's good for. So uh, reach out to us to today if you could. Uh, but once again, thanks again for jumping on. If there's anything we can ever do to help you, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope everybody has a, a great rest of the day and a great wet rest of the week. Thanks a lot.